The following program is brought to you by friends and partners of End Time Headlines. Today, guys, I'm going to be dealing with a particular subject called Six Fundamental Principles on Soul Winning. Six Fundamental Principles on Soul Winning. I think this is extremely important, and this is why we're talking about this today. We're not, you know, today we're not dealing with a prophetic subject. We're not dealing with uh, an update or headlines, but today we are particularly dealing with a, a, an equipping message. So that's what we're going to be dealing with today. So let's get after the six principles. Number one, these are principles. I, I have taught this before, but I've noticed I went through our podcast lineup and I noticed that this, although this is on our YouTube channel, this is not on our Rumble channel and this is nowhere in our podcast on Apple or Spotify. So we need to get this out and get this out there to other uh, avenues of, of different social media outlets so that people can get equipped uh, listening and watching from other angles. So that's why we're redoing this. And you're going to see this from time to time, guys. So again, if you're new to the broadcast, this may be new. This may be the first time you've ever heard this message, or you may be a, uh, a longtime viewer, subscriber, or partner of our ministry. Um, so for you, this is just going to sharpen the edge of your sword just a little bit more, because again, this is an equipping messages or equipping message. So you can take this and you can go and it'll help you in the particular subject that we're dealing with. So today we're going to be dealing with soul winning. The Bible says, uh, a wise man winneth souls. So it takes wisdom because you can't just, you know, uh, you get saved, you get born again, and you know, you have your testimony, you go out here and you share uh, your testimony, which is extremely important. And that's probably one of the things we'll be dealing with, but you need more than just that uh, because you're going to be dealing with um, different venues. You're going to be dealing with different environments. You're going to be dealing with different characters of people. You're going to be dealing with different backgrounds and different societal uh, scenarios and different things. And that's why we're dealing with this today. So number one, and this is probably the most important principle, and we put this right off the top, and that is, if you're taking notes, write this down. Never give up praying and believing for individuals that you want to be saved. Let me say that again. Never give up praying and never give up believing for individuals that you want to saved or born again, or coming to the kingdom of God. Now, 1 Corinthians chapter 3, verses 6 and 8, the apostle Paul wrote this to the church of Corinth, and he said, I planted, Apollos watered, but God gave the increase. So then neither he who plants is anything, and neither is he who waters, but it's God who gives the increase. And now he who plants and he who waters are one, and each one will receive his own reward according to his own labor. So there, there's a lot of meat in this passage out of 1 Corinthians chapter 3, verses 6 to 8. First of all, I want to emphasize here that Paul is referring to himself as the planter. And then he says that Apollos, who is his fellow laborer uh, in the gospel, Apollos comes along ministering with him and he will water the seed in which Paul planted. Now, what does that mean? It simply means this in practicality. Here you are at your work. Here you are at your family, your family gatherings, your Thanksgiving, you're at Christmas or you're at work or whatever the case may be. Every day you punch in, you go to work, you're doing your daily job and you're there and you may be the apostle Paul there. You may be called to uh, and for a season, you're called to plant seed. You're called now. How do you plant seed? You uh, you be an example to them. You let your light shine among them. You be salt. You be a witness. Uh, you talk about the word. You talk about God. You share your testimony to them. You share your experiences with them. You share how God healed you. You share how God delivered you. You share how God set you free. You share how you were once lost, but now you're found. You were once blind, but now you see. You just share what God has done in your life 
life. So you're planting seed in their lives. Now, I want to tell you something. I, I want to give you this word, and that is this, that always remember, when a sower sows seed, it would be absolutely ridiculous to believe that you're going to see an instantaneous harvest. So when I, in the natural, when I'm planting a garden or when I'm laying grass seed, I'm, I'm planting the seed in one season and I have enough knowledge and enough understanding and enough wisdom to know that once I throw the seed down, I then have to rely on other circumstances to take, uh, to, to, to take process. Now, what does that mean? In the natural, when you throw seed down, when you plant seed in the dirt, you then have to, you have to, uh, you have to uh, step aside and let other methods and other processes begin to take foot. So in the natural, you plant your seed and then you got to rely on natural sunlight. Then you have to rely on the water. You have to rely on the rain. You have to, you know, and if there's not enough rain, you have to bring about an irrigation system. Then you come along every so often and you put fertilizer down. You have to, you have to dig and dung it, fertilize it. So the apostle Paul understood here, what he's trying to teach us here is, you know, we, when we get saved, we become, we become zealous and we become full of zeal and we come in with this idea and this mindset that we're going to just win everybody to the Lord in a two week process at our work. Now, I'm not saying that you couldn't lead people to the Lord and I'm not saying that you couldn't uh, see a lot of people get saved in that period of time. But many times if we don't see that or we don't see the expected results, we can become discouraged and we can give up praying and believing for them. But we have to remember that what we plant another man or woman of God may come right behind us and water the seed that has already been planted in seasons past. This is what happened to me. I can testify to you that when I was raised up, my mother planted the seed in my heart through sharing the gospel of Jesus Christ with me from sharing scriptures with me and even bringing me to church at an early age when I was real little. But of course, you know, as time went on and I reached, uh, you know, a, a maturity uh, or not really maturity, but I would say puberty when I turned 13, 14 years old, 15 years old, sin began to creep in. I began to run around with the wrong crowd. I began to do things I shouldn't do. And God was the farthest from my, from my head and from my uh, heart. But the seed was planted. And then years later, when I was 20, around 23 years of age, I, there was a individual who uh, was a friend of mine who I went to school with. He was called to come along and water, which I didn't understand that at the time, but he was, and I know this now, he was watering the seed that was already planted. And eventually it led to a harvest, which was my salvation on June 2nd of 2000. So here's what I'm trying to tell you. The Apostle Paul also said in the book of Galatians, let us not grow weary while doing good, for in due season we shall reap if we don't lose heart. Now remember that. You got to keep doing it. Keep planting, keep watering, and keep looking with expectation for the harvest to come. Now notice here, uh, when I go back up to 1 Corinthians 3, the Apostle Paul said, I am nothing, and he said, Apollos is nothing, but we are only mere vessels that God is using, and it's truly God who gives the increase. So it's never about me, it's never about you, it's never about pastor so-and-so, minister so-and-so, evangelist so-and-so, or apostle so-and-so. All they are is obedient vessels that God has raised up, called up 
to spread and preach the gospel either through planting the seed or watering the seed, and then God will give the increase. Now, that brings me to number two. The second principle is this, ready? Always be willing to go the extra mile, and if need be, meet them where they are. Let me say that again. Always be willing to go the extra mile, and if need be, meet them where they are. Listen, and, and I want to give a disclaimer on this. Now, what is a disclaimer? A warning. If you are a babe in Christ, uh, the Apostle Paul talks about this to the church of Corinth. He talks about, and you can identify a babe in Christ if, they can, if they're only on the milk of the word. In other words, you've been saved a, a week or two or a couple of weeks or a couple of months. I even say a couple of years. You're not fully matured in the meat of the word. You're not full of the Holy Spirit. You don't have much wisdom and knowledge and understanding of the word. And you are subject to being blown by every wind of doctrine. You're subject to, uh, to discouragement, falling, uh, backsliding. And there's a reason why God tells you to come out from among them, be separate. There's a process called sanctification. There's a process called holiness and righteousness, and being set apart. God takes you through that process. So I, now this is the disclaimer on this. If you are a babe in Christ, I do not recommend doing this because this, even though you intend for it to be good, could also be damaging to you if you're not mature in Christ. But, and, and what do you say? So you say, what are you talking about? Look, there is some people out there that we, they will never step foot in our churches, but we can bring the church to them. There's some people in the bar. There's some people in the club. There's some people in the dope house. Come on. There's some people, there's some people that you will never get them to step foot in the church. But what if you brought the gospel to them? What if you brought it to them on their turf. Now, I remember this happened to me. When I first got saved, I hung out with a lot of dope smokers and alcohol drinkers and partiers. Come on, don't judge me. I know many of you guys had the same background. And when I got saved, God brought me through that process of sanctification that I'm talking about. He began to speak to me about separating myself. He began to speak to me about setting myself apart from them. I couldn't be yoked with them. I couldn't be hanging out with them and partaking of their sin any longer. Come on. I, I Listen, I'm old school. I believe if you really had a touch of God, if you're really born again, come on, then you're a new creation in Christ Jesus and the old has passed away and the all and and all things have become new in other words you have new desires you have a new passion and you will no longer desire those things not to say that you uh that's not to say that you won't struggle with some things in your flesh not to say you won't struggle with mindsets not to say you won't struggle with some relationships and 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 and, uh, and entanglements of these things. This is why the Apostle Paul talked about, he said, uh, be careful of entangling yourselves with the affairs of this life and getting caught up in the lust of the flesh, the lust of the eyes and the pride of life, because these things become strongholds and bondages in our lives. But anyway, nevertheless, when I first got saved, he took me through a process of time where he began to sanctify me and set me apart. And then eventually, it, and now watch this, I was planting seed, trying to get them to come to the Lord, get them to read the word of God, get them to come to, to the church that I was attending, but it was not becoming successful. So I took it a step farther and I, I prayed about this and felt released of God to go on their turf. So I would go into their homes 
Come on, right in the midst of the dope smoking, right in the midst of the drinking of alcohol, right in the midst of their sins. I was not partaking of their sin, but I was, come on, I was in the midst of that and I was preaching Christ. I was being a light in the midst of them. I was letting them know that there is an encounter with a true and living God that is so powerful that it can remove the desire of everything that you thought you needed to be to, to be sustained in life. Everything you thought you had to drink away your sorrows. You thought you had to smoke away your sorrows. You thought you would have to, uh, you snort away your sorrows or take it in a pill or meet it at a club or whatever you were trying to suppress. Come on. This is why people do this guy. Come on, there's a, there's a group of people out there that actually enjoy sin. And the Bible says sin is fun for a season. But I'm telling you, there's a lot of people that are bound by drugs, bound by alcohol, bound by pills, bound by pornography, bound by all these things. Not because they, they and a lot of them, if you really talk to them, they really don't want to do these things, but they are suppressing hurt. They're suppressing hardships. They're suppressing letdowns. They're suppressing abandonments. They're suppressing suppressing anger. They're uh, suppressing frustrations. They are suppressing things. When you have a cold and you buy a cough suppressant, the cough suppressant does not heal you of the cough. It simply suppresses or covers up something and numbs you of something that is persistently there and that exists, but you don't feel the effects of it because you're numb from it. So people, because they don't know Christ, they've never had an encounter with the true and living God. They've never had an encounter with the word that was made flesh. Come on, somebody. They've never had the power of the presence of the Holy Spirit coming upon them. They're looking for it in a drug, looking for it in a drink, looking for it in sex, looking for it in all these other places. So sometimes God will call you to go where they are. Why? So you can be salt and that you can be light and they will be confounded that you have kept your head above water without drugs, without alcohol, without sexual relationships every other weekend and without doing this and doing that. And this, come on, they'll be confounded that the you that they once knew that had to rely on all the substances to suppress your emotions, suppress your feelings, and suppress the things that you were dealing with. All of a sudden, they see that you don't have a bottle in your hand. You don't have a joint rolling up in your hand. You don't have a needle in your arm anymore. And you don't have some chick on your arm or some dude on your arm like you had every other weekend. But instead, you come on you got a bible in your hand you've got some gospel tracks in your hand and you've got a smile on your face your presence has changed your countenance has changed you've got joy unspeakable and full of glory and the bible says that they will ask you to give an account of come on the testimony that you carry and why you have it and it will give you the opportunity to open your mouth and either sow the seed or water the seed and eventually you will get and see the increase so here i was going there in the midst of all this stuff demons manifesting cussing me out the the same people that loved me come on when i had a when i had a, when i had weed to bring when i had alcohol to bring when i had drugs to bring they loved me they adored me they wanted me there but now instead of the drugs instead of the alcohol instead i'm bringing jesus i'm bringing the holy spirit and i'm bringing the word of god all of a sudden I have now, who was once their friend, have become their enemy. Come on, I'm preaching better than some of y'all listening today. I'm trying to tell you, but listen, I knew the consequences. I already counted the cost of the repercussions that I was going to get myself into if I stepped in their territory. 
Come on. Why do you think de devils don't want to go into your church? Because they will be made manifest by the light. And it's the same reason why if you, as the light, steps into their darkness, the same light that's in you, come on, exposes their darkness and exposes their environment. So those demons begin to manifest and begin to squirm on the inside of them and they become uneasy. And they'll cuss you. The same people that loved you will cuss you. And they'll swear at you. And they'll curse your God. And they'll blaspheme your God. And they'll tell you to get out. And they'll tell you to leave. And that's what happened to me. But I'm going to tell you, let me give you the rest of the story. The weeks went by. Months went by. But eventually, each and every one of them came to me on a private level. They came to me personally and private. Come on. It reminds me of Nicodemus. Nicodemus, when he was with his fair, when he was with the Sadducees and the Pharisees and the teachers of the law, when he was with them, he was listening because why the seed of, of Yeshua was going into his heart. He, the words that Yeshua would, that Jesus would preach the sermon on the Mount, the, the messages, the parables, they were penetrating his heart. They were seed going into his heart. So he, he knew that he would risk his reputation to go in public. Public. So instead, the Bible says he went on a private rendezvous in the middle of the night, in the, in the middle of the night, at the midnight hour, he searched out Jesus alone. And he admitted, he said, teacher, rabbi, we know that the things that you do and how you do it has to be from God. So he acknowledged that he was from God. He acknowledged that he was the, the Messiah. Come on. I'm telling you, you'll see these people. They'll curse you in public. They'll swear at you in public. They'll blaspheme your God in public. They'll shake their fist at you in public. But come on, let them live life a little bit. The longer they live life and they go through hardships, they go through downturns, they go through a sickness, they go through poverty, they go through these trials, eventually the seed that you planted in the heart will begin to take root and you keep praying for them by watering the seed through prayer and through intercession and you'll see them show up at your door like Nicodemus knocking on your door and saying, can you tell me a little bit more about this Jesus that flipped and turned your life upside down so number two be willing to go the extra mile and meet them where they are if need be number three be prepared for setbacks and disappointments let me say that again be prepared expect it listen you start sowing seed you start watering seed you can expect setbacks and disappointments. Listen, you start telling people about Jesus. You start inviting them to church. Watch this. Come on. I'm going to get some amens right here. You ready for this? You'll get people all day long at your workplace and in your family that will lie to you to your face and tell you, oh, yeah, yeah, brother. Oh, yeah, sister. I'm going to be there next Sunday. I'm going to be at the church. I'm going to be there Wednesday night. I'm going to be there for that special Friday night service. I'll be there. Mark my words. I'll be there. Listen, I guarantee you is the moment they open their mouth and they say, I'll be there. I'll be at the church service. I'll be at the revival service. I'll be there at the prayer meeting. I'll be at the special service. I'll be at the Bible study at your house. I'll be in the cell group meeting. I will come because you invited me to. Listen, mark my words, hell will unleash everything it can to prevent them from showing up at the door of your church, the door of your house, your prayer meeting, your revival service, I'm telling you, everything the enemy can throw at them will come. I've seen everything. Nothing shocks me anymore. Well, you know, I invited uh, Sister Jenny and her husband and her kids to come to church. They've never been to church. I invited them to come to church. I'm telling you, they don't show up, and you're, you 
wonder what happened the next day. They tell you, you're never going to believe this, which I believe it. Absolutely believe it now because I've seen it so much. They'll tell you, you I, we couldn't believe it. Listen, they were going to come on Sunday morning on Saturday night while they were out at the movies, their house caught on fire and they can't even figure out how their house caught on fire. Come on, you invited Brother Jimmy from your work, who's an alcoholic, taught him to come to the revival service, and the presence of God would be there, and God would save him and sober him and deliver him from alcohol, and he's finally said yes that he's going to come, and the night before he's supposed to show up, or the day of, he gets into a freak car accident, come on, he blows a tire that shouldn't have, and he's only had the tires for two weeks but they happen to be recalled tires. Come on, you invite you invited Sarah to your Bible study and that morning she got breakfast at the Cracker Barrel and just so happened to get food poisoning that day even though she goes every Wednesday morning and never been sick but the morning of the day of that she was going to come that night to your Bible study, she happened to get food poisons, food poisoning. You say, what are you talking about, preacher? I'm trying to tell the Paul, the apostle Paul in the New Testament, uh, testified himself writing in, in, in the gospels. He said this, I often desired to come to you, but was hindered by Satan. Somebody say this, ready? Be prepared for setbacks and disappointments. Be prepared for setbacks and disappointments. Why? Because it's going to happen. When I was not saved and a friend of mine who was saved kept asking me to come to, G come to church I couldn't tell you how many times I said, no, that's not my cup of tea. I'm busy. Maybe another time. No, thank you. I mean, over and over again, this guy wouldn't get the clue. This guy wouldn't take no for an answer. And I thank God that he didn't. And I thank God that he understood what I'm telling you today. He didn't let the setback come on, be a, a discouragement. But instead, he pressed through, he kept planting the seed, he kept watering the seed, and eventually, I said yes, and it was on a Friday night that I came, and that was the night that I said yes, and got born again. Now, what, have, what would have happened if he would have gave up? I would have never went, and God only knows where I would be today. I wouldn't be here today. I wouldn't be preaching to you today. I wouldn't be doing this today. I, who knows? But I'm trying to tell you guys, some of you all's got family, you've got coworkers, you've got friends, you got people around you and your proximity and God, you, you've invited them, you've given them flyers, you've given them invitations, you've called them, you've emailed them, you've Facebook messaged them, you've tweeted them, you've done everything you know that you possibly can do. You've exhausted every resource and you are sick of excuses of why they can't come to church. Don't give up and keep going forward and prepare that there's going to be setbacks and disappointments. Then I want to get to number three, which really kind of is the, the sister or the brother of number two. Ready? Here's another thing we got to be prepared for. Ready? Opposition. Be prepared for opposition. Now, what do you mean by this, brother? This opposition can come before they give their heart to the Lord or during the process of you trying to lead them to the Lord. Opposition can come. And it's usually, that, that's, what, that's why we talked about setbacks and disappointments. So we kind of covered that. So let me talk about this other angle of this. Be prepared for opposition in this. Ready? In the sower, in the parable of the sower and the seed. 
the Lord talked about, and the sower went out and he sowed some seed and some fell on good ground, some fell on thorny ground, some fell on shallow ground and some fell on rocky ground. And he gives each the interpretation of each one of these. And one of these, he talks about this, or two of these, the thorns and the rocks. He said, the seed fall, and even, even on the bare ground, if three out of the four were negative, one was good. The, the good ground bears 30, 60, 100 fold, but the other one, watch this. Here's what happens, ready? And this is exactly what we're talking about. You sow the seed, watch this. They accept it, they receive it, they, they'll even come to church, they'll come to the cell group meeting, they'll, you lead them to the Lord in your, uh, in a parking lot, at a department store, at a, a revival meeting, whatever, you, you see them actually say yes to the Lord, you lead them to the Lord, hallelujah, praise God, everybody's celebrating, all of heaven is rejoicing, they're born again, but watch this, all of a sudden, Watch, all hell begins to break loose as a direct result of what just happened in their life. So I, I couldn't tell you how many times I've seen this too. They're Sunday morning, Sunday night, whatever service they come or you lead them. It don't even have to be. I don't want to get religious on this and say it's got to be in a Sunday morning or Sunday night service. It can be whatever. You lead them in a the parking lot, lead them in, the, in, in your home, uh, at, at somebody's house, at a group, whatever. You lead them to the Lord and then they're happy. They're excited. They can't wait. They go out and buy a new Bible or a Bible. They they write their name down agreeing. They're like, yes, I'm going to come to the cell group meeting. I'm going to do this. I'm going to do that. And then all of a sudden, watch this. The cares of this life begins to choke out the seed. What, what are we talking about? The cares of this life. All of a sudden, well, I would come to church but I have to take care of this. I've got bills, Billy Joe, Joe Bob, Mary Sue. They've got, they've got, we've got to go to this. We've got this recital to go to. We've got this game to go to. We've got this practice to go to. We've got this part of play to go to. We've got this. We've committed to that. We can't do this. We would come to church preacher, but we got all this stuff going on. And it just happened to be the day that we should come to church. That's the day we have to take care of all this. So they keep doing this and keep doing this and keep doing this. All of a sudden, they find themselves backslid. All of a sudden, you discover where are they at? I haven't heard from them. I don't see them. And now they've allowed the cares of this life to choke the word out. Then there's others. Hallelujah. Yes to Jesus. Yes, I'm born again. Yes, I've got my Bible. Yes, I'm going to make this commitment to God. But then, watch this, they go home and their spouse, who is not born again, is not saved, has the blinders on their eyes, doesn't want anything to do with God. Now they have a World War III taking place in their own home, under their own roof. Why? Because the spirit of darkness and the spirit of light are in collision. Light, darkness, evil, good, righteousness, unrighteousness. I don't want to go to church. I don't want to be in church. I have nothing to do with church. I want to go to church. I want to be in the church. I want to be a part of the church and I want to serve in the church. So now this war is taking place in their house. Jesus said, your enemies will be those of your own household. What am I talking about? Jesus said to some, the seed would be sown into a place where they will receive it with joy for a season. But when persecution rises for the sake of the seed or the sake of the gospel, it chokes it out of them. See, because some people, they're in a, they have a career that is a sinful career. And 
if so they've accepted the Lord, but then they find out through the Holy Spirit, through the Word of God, through conviction of the Spirit of God, that their profession is probably not moral. It's not wholesome. So now they have to choose. Am I going to trust God that he's my provider and leave this profession that the Holy Spirit is saying is unrighteous, it's immoral, it's an abomination, and it's displeasing to God, it's grieving the Holy Spirit? Are they going to choose to trust God and leave that profession and walk by faith and not by sight and believe that God will not only provide a better job, but come on, a better paying job? Or are they going to say, you know what? Thanks, but no thanks, God. Mammon is my God, and this is my profession, and this is what I choose. Don't tell me, guys, that it doesn't happen. I see it all the time. So what am I talking about? I'm talking about be prepared for opposition. This is the importance of discipleship for believers. Why we, if we lead them to the Lord, that's what matters. That's the beginning, guys. Leading them to the Lord and getting them saved is the beginning of this journey. But listen, we do them injustice if we lead them to an altar call, but then abandon them and not disciple them and equip them. This is why Paul said, you have many, listen, he said, you have many teachers, but you have not many fathers. We need some fathers. We need some older men and women of God. I'd say mothers and fathers. We need older, older men and women of God to come along and take younger men and younger women of God and begin to equip them and pour into them and mentor them and disciple them. Why? Because we need to let them know that these things are going to happen so they can expect that to happen. All right. Number four, guys, I got to get through this. Number one, never give up praying and believing for people regardless of what it looks like. Number two, be willing to go the extra mile, meet them where they are. Number three, be prepared for setbacks and disappointments. Number four, be prepared for adversity and opposition for the sake of the gospel. When they get saved, they're going to experience this. Number five, <coughs> have a plan. And this goes right what we're saying. Have a plan to disciple them after their conversion. Why? Listen to this, Ephesians 3, 17. The apostle Paul said to the church of Ephesus, he said that Christ may dwell in your hearts through faith, that you may be rooted and grounded in love. Somebody say rooted and grounded. Listen, if I go out here and, and if I uproot a plant, and then go plant it into the ground with very shallow root system and don't give it enough time for the root system to go deep and to be grounded. You know what will happen? The first time a strong windstorm comes because it doesn't have much root system in itself, it's going to blow that plant straight out of the ground and it's going to be blown by every wind of doctrine. This is why, listen, this is what blows me away, no pun intended, on these uh, social media comment sections on Facebook, on Twitter, on Instagram, you see the ignorance and immaturity in believers that have a very shallow root system that it will be evident among their comments. All day long, it will be evident in the comments. And it, the Bible says out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth will speak. People that are on the milk it will be evident whether they're on milk or whether they're on meat, and it will show through their comments on social media. Listen to this, Acts 2, 41 through 43. And then those who gladly received the word of the Lord were baptized. And by the way, baptism, I want to say this, water baptism is not necessary for salvation, but it is essential Come on, for the growth and maturity of the believer. I absolutely, somebody said one time, well, Brother Ricky, do you believe water baptism is necessary for salvation? No, we are saved through the blood of Jesus, through faith, by grace, but we are commanded to be baptized in the name of Jesus. 
Come on, somebody. It's a commandment. So it says those that receive the word, Acts 2, 41 through 43, they received the word with gladness, but they were baptized. Come on. Why? Because it's an outward expression of an inward change. And listen, don't ask me to explain this, but there is a supernatural power that comes through water baptism. Listen, and that day about 3,000 souls were added to them, and they continued steadfastly in the apostles' doctrine and fellowship. So you see this progression? There was salvation. There was water baptism. They continued in doctrine. They continued in fellowship. They continued in breaking in bread. They continued in prayer. Let me say that again. Salvation, water baptism, doctrine, fellowship breaking of bread and prayers. Well, I'm saved, hallelujah, so I can just sit down and be easy and just ride it out, hallelujah. And yeah, and you're going to get whooped up on the devil. You're going to be defeated. You're going to be discouraged. You're going to be disappointed. And you probably ain't going to do much for the kingdom because you're always going to be in a cycle of defeat. Listen, maturity is spoken through discipline and obedience. The milk partakers has this mindset. Well, all I need is to be saved and I can just sit down and sit in the pew and be in ride to easy street. Listen, but meat eaters and mature believers, they're the ones that have a prayer life. They're the ones that are discipled. They're the ones that are in fellowship with other believers, even more so as the day approaches. They're the ones that are faithful in their church, faithful in attendance, faithful in serving the church. They're serving a, a church, serving under a pastor. They're committed. They are discipled. They are equipped. They are. They are. They understand sound doctrine. Come on, somebody. That is the mark of a mature believer. Okay. So again, we have to disciple believers once they are saved. Disciple them. All right. And then number six. Number six is a big one, and this one, guys, I see, and it is prevalent, especially on, listen, here's the irony of it. We're preaching on social media here. We're preaching on YouTube. We're preaching on Rumble. We're preaching through podcasts, but I'm going to say it anyway. Plug, get them, Listen, get them plugged into a local body or a group of loving, mature, doctrinally sound, spirit-filled, Bible-believing believers. Now, listen, whether that's a brick-and-mortar church building, whether it's in a cell group, whether it's in a home group, whether it's in an online group like this, because, again, I recognize, depending on where you live, depending on your circumstances, whatever the case may be, this may not be possible to have a brick-and-mortar church. Listen, my friends, even the early church couldn't gather in a what we call a mega church building, a brick-and-mortar church, because of the fear of persecution, so they begin to have church in their homes. So we understand that, but I'm trying to tell you guys, we cannot forsake the assembling of ourselves together. We need one another. How can the hand say into the foot, I don't need you? How can the eye say into the mouth, I don't need you? We, the hand needs the foot, the foot needs the hand, the mouth needs the eyes, the eyes need the mouth, the ears need the both the mouth and the hands. We are many members of one body and we need each other to promote a healthy, strong, and vital body of Christ. Come on, somebody. So listen, when people, uh, listen, I'm very weary of people that say they don't want to be a part of any local body. They don't want to be a part of any church. They don't want to be a part of any group of individuals. They want to be, hallelujah, the Lone Ranger Christian. Guys, listen to me. Mark my words. Individuals like that do not have a good outcome. The Bible even warns about that. 
It talks about that. Even in the book of Ecclesiastes, Ecclesiastes, it says, woe into the man when he falls and he falls alone and there's no one there to pick him up. Amos 3, 2, how can any two walk together lest they be agreed? If the Bible says if one can set a thousand to flight, then two can set 10,000 to flight. Come on, somebody say, I need you and you need me. Come on, I need you to say that today. I need you and you need me. And let's say this, we need each other, whatever that looks like whatever that looks like for you, whatever that looks like for me. Listen, for me, you say, what about you, brother Ricky? Well, let's talk about me for a second. I here in, in where I live in my state of Georgia, I have a local church that I'm a part of. I'm plugged in. I serve under a pastor and I serve that local body. And at times I am an evangelist there and I preach there. I, we preach to the youth. We preach to the adults, but I watch this, but I still serve under a local church and a local body and under a pastor. Why? Because brother Ricky needs a pastor. I need someone that is, has more experience than I. Listen, I've been saved for 21 years. I need someone that has, come on, wisdom in areas that I don't, that is strong in areas that I am weak. Someone that can counsel me, that can help me, that's there when I'm down. Come on, because even all, listen, this is what every pastor, every leader, every, no matter where you are, who you are, we need each other. So let's recap this real quick. If you're taking notes, number one, never give up praying, never give up believing for individuals, no matter how bad it is. Again, don't grow weary and well-doing. Keep planting and keep watering the seed. Number two, be willing to go the extra mile if need be and meet them where they are only if you are mature enough to handle that. Again, that's not for everybody. You will know that. Number three, be prepared for setbacks and disappointments when trying to get them saved. Number four, or be prepared for adversity after you get them saved. Number five, have a plan to equip them and disciple them after they get saved. And number six, get them plugged into a local body or a body of believers. Why? So that they can be fully nourished, so that they can grow and mature in their walk with God. Guys, I hope you've enjoyed this message. Again, this is, I know this is not prophecy and some people, uh, our, our viewing audience is half the amount that it normally is because it's not a prophetic word. It's not a prophetic update. But guys, listen, this is the thing that frustrates me the most. Listen, you can, you can know all the characteristics of the Antichrist. You can know the details of the seven-year tribulation. You can know all about the vile judgments and the bold judgments and the angel judgments. You can know about Daniel's 70 weeks and you can know about the false prophet and the characteristics of all this and that. Listen, but then, but you can't even get victory. Come on, in your daily walk with God. That's why this ministry, our ministry, we're not trying to be like other ministries. I'm not trying to be like pastor so-and-so that you listen to has prophecy updates every week, or we're not trying to be like pastor so-and-so who gets on YouTube every single day, every single time there's a breaking news alert and wants to get on there and do this. I'm not trying to be him. I'm not trying to be him or her. We are doing exactly what God has called us to do. And that is, watch this, to inform our readers and listeners of the times and seasons in which we are in. We are giving you news and headlines from a prophetic perspective, but we're also equipping the body of Christ, equipping the body of Christ and getting the body ready Come on, for the midnight cry. We want you to be ready so that when the trumpet blows, you will not be found naked and want, but you will be ready with oil in your lamp, your wicks trimmed, come on, and fire burning and be ready to meet the bridegroom. Come on, that's our mission statement. So again, if you'd like to know more about our ministry and keep up with our ministry. You could do that to, uh, a couple different ways. Number one, go to intimeheadlines.org, intimeheadlines.com. Subscribe to our 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 uh, page. 
that's where you can find that um, to, 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 to be notified. Uh, you'll get a subscription uh, in your inbox every single day when you subscribe to our main website. Um, also, again, if you, uh, if you download our free app, you can do that by going on to Apple. You can go on to Android. Again, it's on the App Store. It's on the Google Play Store, depending on if you have an Apple device or if you have an Android device. You can download our free app. It's free. Download if you're listening by podcast and not watching this. Again, type in End Time Headlines. Download that app. Get it into your inbox. And it is absolutely free for you to keep up with our uh, all of our news and headlines. Subscribe to push notifications. You're going to see the podcast that you can listen or watch at the below right there in your hand on the uh, on the uh on the app. And as always, guys, we want to give you an opportunity. If you have not yet prayed about becoming a partner of our ministry, we want to give you an opportunity to do that. And you can do that two different ways. You can give electronically through the app or by visiting our main website right there at intimeheadlines.org, intimeheadlines.com, or you can give electronically by going to, uh, by making it out to, uh, uh, by a check or money order, by making it out to Intime Headlines, P.O. Box 1391, that's Monroe, Georgia, 30655. Now, guys, we want to, we want to, I want to give you some quick updates, so please don't sign off. I know we've, we've lost a few people here live on this, but we want to give you some updates real quick. Um, this will be our last broadcast for this week. So today is Wednesday. We will not be here on Thursday or Friday or Saturday or Sunday, but we'll be back on here Monday, Lord willing, because we, we as a family, we have to go out of town this weekend, and we've got a long weekend ahead of us. We've got a wedding to attend and so on and so forth. So today is going to be our last broadcast for this week. We only got two in. We usually do three, sometimes four broadcasts a week. Uh, But we had to cut it short this week. Real quick, before we close out this week, I want to thank a few people uh, that, again, either um, they partner with us uh, by mail or they send us letters, postcards, uh, cards, thank you, gifts, whatever the case would be. So real quick, we want to thank uh, uh, Miss Jade from West Virginia. We want to thank Iris, if you're listening, from Ohio. Uh, we'll be we'll be in your state this weekend, Miss Iris. So thank you again for your support of our minister. We thank Sally from Wisconsin. Uh, we want to thank the Sterlings uh, from Delaware. We want to thank uh, <clears throat> we want to thank the Rose from Michigan. We want to thank the Wheatleys from Virginia, and we want to thank uh, Deborah and Tom from Pennsylvania. So if you're listening. Uh, either by podcast or by Rumble or YouTube or whatever you may watch this or on Facebook Live. Again, thank you so much for your prayers, your support, uh, your your giving, your partnership, uh, the the wonderful gifts, the encouragement, the letters. Uh, we we get those, we read do, read those, and again, and this guy's all you guys w- watching online that give and support us electronically. We see every one of those and we thank you so much again, uh, through your generous giving your partnership, we're able to do what we do and it's free. The, the podcasts are free. The app is free. Everything. We're able to do every single thing free. We don't charge anybody, anything. Now, why do we do that? Because we know, we understand there's people that say, well, brother, I would give, but I just cannot do that. There is no condemnation for those that are in Christ Jesus. We don't condemn you. We, we want to let, we, we want to feed you. We want to equip you and we want to do what you can, but there's people out there and you know who you are that you're blessed. God's blessed you. And through your partnership and helping us do this, you are blessing them. You're, you're a part of the same harvest that we are because of your partnership. So we just, I just want to do that. I know we, we do this from time to time. We thank you, and we just want to do that. We want to thank you guys for what you do and helping us continue to do what we're doing. So we love you guys. God bless you. Remember to keep Brother Ricky and and my family in prayers as we will be hitting the road. We'll be driving for eight to ten hours as we head up to Ohio uh, this weekend, 
and we plan on being back late on Sunday night so we can get back in the saddle and get things going next week for our podcast. So while we're down there, I'll probably be doing some things on my laptop and getting some things put together when we can and we have some downtime. So if you would lift us up in prayer. Um, also, guys, while I'm thinking about it, there is some of our partners of our ministry, one of them, I don't want to disclose her name because I didn't ask her beforehand, but her husband passed away in the wee hours this morning. Uh, he fought a, he fought COVID for months guys. And th there was complications from it and he passed away and went on to be with the Lord. So if you, if you will remember, um, this precious woman of God, whose husband has gone to be with the Lord, please remember her in your prayers. She needs peace. She needs, uh, wisdom. She needs comfort during this time because we know that he's with the Lord, but that doesn't, you know, uh, we who are left behind here on this side of, of heaven, uh, there's a lot of heartache and hardship and, and, and pain there. So we want to lift her up and please do that. Let's pray right now uh, as we close this broadcast. Father, I thank you today for our partners. I thank you for those listeners today that are watching or listening today. Uh, we pray the blessings of the Lord upon them. May you bless them. May you equip them. May you heal those that are sick in their bodies. May you comfort those that are hurting right now, like our dear sister that we talked about. Give peace there. We pray for wisdom today. We pray for blessing today. We pray for the prosperity of God to be upon these today. Traveling mercies for all those that may be traveling this weekend, including myself. Lord, I pray the blessings of the Lord upon their families, upon their marriages, upon their ministries, and upon their businesses. I pray your favor be upon them. May your countenance shine upon them in all that they do. And Father, we thank you. And it's in Jesus' name. We pray and all God's people said, amen and amen. God bless you guys. Again, don't forget to hit the subscribe button, hit the push notification button, uh, the bell, depending on what you're watching, Rumble or YouTube, uh, on Facebook, remember to share this. Uh, you guys on podcast, remember to share that as well. Guys, God bless you. We'll see you next week. Thank you for listening to the End Time Headlines podcast. We pray that you've been blessed and equipped by today's message. For more information about how you can help partner with our ministry, please visit endtimeheadlines.org.